or someone will just walk up and look at me and be like, when's rut coming out? <laughs> I'm like, pardon me. <laughs> I took the glasses off. I stopped talking in the accent and I said, sir, I think you're probably just not on these deer. Like that means they're probably betting on your neighbor's property. They might come over to feed you, coming in late. You're gonna have to get some serious betting and have something on your property that's gonna keep them there all the time or you're never gonna be able to kill them because you can't kill them at night. And he's like, yeah, that's what I feared. And he turned around and he walked away. I was like, how did he not understand after 30 minutes? <laughs> like this was literally stand up comedy. I'd rather share a Bible verse on Sunday morning with an audience of a hundred than just try to sell products and not make any difference at all to an audience of a million. And then it's like, well, that's settled. Let's go. <laughs> what is up, guys? Welcome to the Rise to Elite podcast. My name is Tyler Pruitt, and I am the host, and I am the founder of this show. And I'm excited for another opportunity to be able to share another episode of the Rise to Elite podcast with you guys today. The goal and the mission of the Rise to Elite podcast is to share the stories of people who pursue God, freedom, and the great outdoors, as well as sharing the ideas and the mentality of what it looks like to pursue these very things. And this is exactly why I have asked my guest today to be on the show with me. So my guest today is Bud Fisher. Bud is one of the co-founders of the hilarious and wholesome hunting lifestyle brand called Catching Deers. So Catching Deers was founded on the mentality of brotherhood, and camaraderie and in the spirit of hunt camp with the guys on today's episode bud and i share a great conversation on what it means to take hunting seriously but at the same time make sure that you're enjoying the hunt and having a good time with those around you but before we get into my conversation with bud i just want to ask you guys if you find any value from today's episode at all that you guys leave a rating and review on the podcast platform that you're listening on reviews and ratings go a long way with helping podcasts grow organically because of course the more positive ratings and reviews a show gets the more attention the show gets through podcast platforms so leave a rating and review on your platform and that would be greatly appreciated also i wanted to let you guys know that rise kill eat the rise kill eat podcast is also on facebook and instagram so be sure to follow the show on those social media platforms you can find us on instagram at the handle rise kill eat just like the name of the show all lowercase all together rice kill eat and then on facebook you can find us at the url facebook.com slash rke as in rice kill eat rke of field so again that's the url facebook.com slash rke of field so again thank you guys for listening to the rice kill eat podcast today and let's go ahead and jump right into my conversation with bud fisher of catching deers Looks like we are rolling and we are ready to rock here. So sitting here with Bud Fisher and we've talked a little bit, you know, just kind of get to getting to know each other a little bit leading up to this point. And first of all, I just want to thank you for being on the Rise Kill Elite podcast with me. And this is a definitely a privilege and definitely a, a pleasure of mine to, to have you on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Tyler. Yeah, absolutely, man. This is, uh, you know, I was going through some of my old podcast guests, just kind of, kind of, uh, going through the list and you were my first international guest that I've ever had like everybody else has been in the states and I know you living up in Canada this is my my first uh person that I've had I've had a conversation with on the podcast that's not in the states <laughs> so you want me to speak English or French then what do you prefer <laughs> if you can do it in French that would be amazing <laughs> uh, no no I can't people ask okay. me from Canada if I speak French and I say un petite per which <laughs> is <laughs> very poorly pronounced a little bit, but no, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> by any means, but no, happy to be your first international guest representing Canada, your friendly neighbors, apologetic neighbors to the North. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what's it like living up there in Canada? I mean, of course, you know, being a, uh, uh, I guess a uncultured American down here, I've never been up to Canada before. So what's it like being up there? Uh, well, right now we're still, we're still on more COVID lockdown than you guys are. Um, but culturally right now, at least for hunters, I mean, we're, we're fighting some, you know, serious, what you would call two a stuff where our prime ministers trying to take away our guns and just mm -hmm. made, you know, um, AR 15s, you had to have a, um, you know, a secondary, uh, license for those. And now you can't have them at all. And they're trying to do buybacks and it's, it's, 
we're um, more liberal than than you guys are, kind of smack in the middle, maybe between Europe and the United States. And so as a gun wielding outdoorsman in Canada, we're just making sure our, our rights aren't trampled on too much here. So uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting time, I guess, without getting too political, just speaking on the hunting front, we had our bear hunt taken away. This is back maybe 15 years ago. It's uh, our spring bear hunt and it, that was due to political reasons. And then it's back again now. So I just finished up a spring bear hunt about a week ago that was successful and a whole lot of fun with my brothers and my dad. And so, yeah, that's, we're, we're on major lockdown, but lots to do fishing and uh, fishing season in full swing. We had successful turkey season, which was a lot of fun and then bear. And so just trying to get out the outdoors creation as much as we can. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the kind of the thing about being an outdoorsman and being a hunter, like during this whole COVID lockdown and everything. Like, uh, I know for me personally, like I'm a school teacher full time. So I was uh, working from home since March and, uh, I was actually able to get more time in the outdoors yeah. because of everything. And, uh, you know, the whole idea of social distancing wasn't really an, an issue for me. I'm an introvert by nature and I just love, you know, being in the outdoors anyway. So it's like, heck yeah, let's, let's go for it. Let's go, go fish and do some turkey hunting. That was right before, you know, everything kind of, uh, kind of went down too, as far as, you know, locking down and everything. So it kind of worked out as far as, as far as that goes. I know it's worked out for a lot of people also. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that, hunting is for me i think you know um at its core i mean i love the passion i love being outdoors but trying to kind of articulate a little bit farther is just that is like that quiet time you know a alone and creation to just kind of be still take the psalm forty six ten, be still and know that i am god you know that that's what hunting is for me and it's kind of a recharge and a rest and especially with where things are at you know with covid and then with with um you know, I guess politically and unrest and all of those things, it's like, it, it's more necessary now than ever to have that time to just kind of reflect and to recharge and to slow down and get away. So, uh, that's, that's certainly what it is for me. I have, a, I have a tattoo. I only have one tattoo. Um, but it kind of, that it, it's meant to represent that what, what hunting means to me. And it's, just kind of some trees on the underside of my arm. And then in white space, it's got a cross in the trees. And it's just kind That's of awesome. like that, that quiet, that peace in the wilderness is what it's meant to represent, kind of stemming from that Psalm 46. And so, yeah, anyway. that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't, I, yeah, I never uh, noticed that on you whenever I was, you know, like looking through pictures and seeing you on YouTube or whatever it doesn't, never really noticed that. That's cool that you, uh, you've got that on there. That's, that's really awesome. My wife, my wife likes tattoos. And so she was, she was on me. She probably was like seven years trying to convince me to get a tattoo. And that was the one that I settled on that would uh, be meaningful um, permanently, I think is something along those lines. So, yeah. 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 I, I've considered getting some tattoos and I've got a couple in mind that I think I'm going to get uh, a little bit later on down the road. Um, there's a lot of people who you talk about having meaningful tattoos. I've seen some tattoos that um, are quite the opposite. <laughs> some, of them, some of them are some pretty crazy ones, but yeah, I've got, I've got some, uh, you know, associated with my faith and you know, associated with like my, my marriage date and all that kind of thing that yeah. I'm, I'm wanting to work on. And those having those significant tattoos and uh, is, is definitely a, definitely a good idea. Cause you know, interests change. And if you get a cheeseburger tattooed to your, or you know, it's probably not the best idea. So, <laughs> well, I, I saw one a couple of weeks ago. Somebody posted it, and uh, one of the guys on the team emailed it to me. And someone put the Rut Daniels line didn't go twenty. Put a tattoo that on it. I don't know if it was on their arm or their calf, and I got a good chuckle out of that. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so, what did uh, you know? When did the whole hunting deal start for you? I mean, I mean everybody kind of has a beginning as far as you know, getting introduced into hunting. Um, you know, some people get into it later on in life. Some people have those those family members, dads, uncles, grandpas that bring them up. So, what's that kind of look like for you? Yeah, it was it was a family it was a family thing for us. My my dad um, and his dad did a little bit of fishing and a little bit of duck hunting together. Um, but on my mom's side, uh, was really where we went and, um, and got started in, in hunting. So when, when I was old enough, my dad would take me and my two brothers and we would go 
um, to my uncle's hunt camp, my mom's brothers and everybody would get together there. She has a large family. So my mom has five brothers and four sisters. And so there's this big hunt camp and it was, um, loud and entertaining and fun. And, um, we would go up there together and I went up there to spend time with my cousins and with my dad and, and my brothers, uh, before I could ever shoot a gun or before I could legally hunt here. And it's different here. I mean, to be an apprentice hunter here, I think you have to be 13 or something like that. Whereas, you know, in Kentucky where, where we have hunt camp and we do a lot of hunting, you know, our property manager, there is three-year-old daughter has shot, <laughs> shot deer, <laughs> very different, but I was more into, you know, fishing when I, when I could, when I was young, but I always wanted to be outside. And, you know, we had just like a two acre tree property growing up, but I would be running around that with a BB gun and stuff like that. And, you know, and then going up to hunt camp with my, my dad and brothers, but really when it became kind of my own and I really started to, to you know, dive into it hardcore, it was right around the start of high school. Um, no, I was a little bit after that, maybe I was 15 or 16 and my, my, parents bought a small like hundred acre farm just outside of town and it had some deer on it. And so my oldest brother, Rob and I uh, were living at home at that point. I think my sister was in university and my brother, Mike was off playing hockey. And um, so we decided we were going to try to plant some food plots and we found some rubs and, and things like that. And, and we bought bows and decided we were going to, you know, try our hand at, at bow hunting. And so we did that there. That was the first really experience we had with, what what is you know the traditional or the the kind of american tree stand hunting experience and go i guess back to my 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 growing up at my uncle's um hunt camp we did we did it different we meat hunted through and through if we had a legal tag for it we shot it every once in a while a decent buck could be shot but we were hunting for meat and we would run dogs and that was the only way i ever knew how to hunt prior to getting a little bit of space and hanging some tree stands is you know, you have guys set up in a U formation around a hundred acre block or something. And then you let the dogs go and somebody's running the dogs through the woods. And, you know, your uncle's levering a 30, 30 out of buck running through the timber. And that was what hunting was for us growing up. And now looking back, it's like, geez, not too many people do it that way, except for, you know, back home. But, um, my, my first experience in like how we do it now, I guess, if we're not going back to our roots is, um, we had an awesome hunt. I'll, I'll tell you the story quickly, but, um, this was like what my, really what I think about my first true hunt is my brother, Rob and I went out on the opening morning here in Canada, which is first week in November. And we were close enough to town that you have to use a shotgun. You can't use a rifle. And so we had, you know, like a smooth bore 12 gauge shotgun with like a rifled slug. And, um, we had found there was a overgrown field that had some rubs in it. So we decided to set up on that edge and I put, you know, my brother Rob, or he decided to sit on the, on the one fence line up a little bit higher. He couldn't see very well. I decided I was going to climb a tree, no gun or anything. I was just up there to kind of scout and to try to call and to be out there with my brother. And like, looking back, like there's no reason that this should have worked at all. But I climbed this tree and sat, like no tree stand, no anything, sat in the fork of a tree, just if like a, you know, an old, I think lineman jacket or like a, like a, like a blaze orange jacket on. I think it had a hole, like a hole burnt in the pocket of it. And I had bought, I went to like Walmart and bought a, um, a bleak can and a grunt tube. And then I had one shed antler I had found and I had nothing to rattle it against. So I brought, um, I, um, a framing hammer. So I had a hammer oh, nice. in my backpack just so that I could rattle it against something. And anyways, I climbed up that tree and I saw a doe and, and I tried grunting a few times and nothing. And then probably an hour and a half into this hunt. And I remember it was like super cold. It was, um, frost on the ground in the middle of the rut. And I saw movement to my left and crossed over the fence line, probably 40 yards from me, not even was like a nice, like heavy bodied buck. And it went to where there was a doe previously that I'd watched and it followed this doe's scent trail nose down. So I pull out the grunt tube and I'm grunting at it and, um, it's grunting back at me, but it won't turn around. And it goes to the far kitty corner of the field. And I, I'm just rifling through this like backpack, probably a school backpack that I had and pulled out this bleed can and tipped it over. 
and the thing fired its head up and looked at me. I was like, oh my goodness. I don't even know that like, I've never really been a part of a hunt that I encountered a buck, I don't think, at this point. So I tipped the bleak can over again, and that thing turned around and beelined straight towards us. And he came right underneath me, sitting up in a tree, in the fork of a tree. And I remember like steam coming out of its nostrils and this big body, like big neck, middle of the rut buck came like right underneath me. And I'm thinking, okay, Rob, shoot it, shoot it. And he, and nothing. And it keeps coming. I'm like, shoot it, shoot it. And I, at this point, I'm like, what is happening? I'm thinking Rob fell asleep. All of a sudden he shoots this, this deer, it barrel rolls, gets back up. He shoots it again and drops it. And I have to like stay in, I can't even hardly climb out of the tree because I'm shaking. I'm like 16 years old. I'm like shaking in the street. I finally get down and I go over to my brother and he goes, where did that come from? Like he had, he didn't see a deer. I watched the doe previously. I watched this buck cross all the way across the field, almost head into the wood, called it all the way back. And he had, he didn't see a thing. And out of nowhere, he had this buck trotting towards him at like 11 yards and he, he dropped the thing at like 10 yards with a shotgun and uh that was like my f first real hunt and it was just it was kind of spoiled because this this nice mature deer it was probably 125 inches maybe but it field dressed out at i think like it was 215 to 230 pounds like it was a heavy big mature Man. body and we're sitting there in this like old camo like old shotgun like no gear and it was like the coolest hunt ever and i i like that was one of my fondest ever memories of, of deer hunting and, and from there it was like okay like i'm i'm absolutely hooked and so i've been bow hunting for the last i don't know 16 years or something like that 17 years since then and never looked back now so, so sitting up in that tree you had a a much better uh, I guess, vantage point than what he had. So he just, from his perspective, I guess he just saw it coming at, at him and yeah, you, yeah. you you were able to kind of see everything from up there. Yeah. It didn't make our That's setup awesome. didn't, didn't make any sense. I mean, we didn't have a tree stand. So he just, you know, was like, I'm going to sit up here. He could see the one, it was on a fence line. So he could see the one field better than the other, but it came from where he kind of wasn't expecting and it, and it was all overgrown. And so he could hardly, hardly see the one side and it just ended up, right on top of them <laughs> so <laughs> so it was it almost it almost scared them but uh yeah it was quite the quite the first hunt that's for sure that's great yeah those you know those first ex exposures to those big mature bucks i mean it's it's something and it really and if you're out there calling too i mean have them you know respond to you and to literally be speaking their language it's such a cool experience to be able to uh if anybody's you know ever had that opportunity such a cool experience to be able to actually you know get out there you're in their room you're in their house you're in you know their environment and you're speaking their language and they're responding to you it's it's crazy to actually be able to experience that and that's that's an awesome story she you, you just told yeah well i i mean it, it i i've done a lot of reading and magazines and stuff like that you know all of the like like everybody that's passionate about hunting has but to have it actually come together in that in that way, especially where we are in, in, in Canada, there's so much big timber and stuff like that. You just don't have those experiences very often. So it was like, it was a gift, this, this hunt, I kind of picture it as a gift. And then, you know, just to, to replicate that again, this was something that you'd see, you know, this is something from my childhood that I'd watch on, you know, real tree or something like that. And then to have that happen, we were like, what? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was pretty cool so yeah those, those all those times that we go out into the woods and we come home empty-handed and you know 95 percent of the time at least it is for me at least 95 percent of the time whenever i'm coming home empty-handed it all is worthwhile whenever you have a story like uh, that when it whenever everything kind of comes together and you know you kind of see that a lot with like any really any other kind of hunting as well i mean of course with deer that's a that's the case but you know with turkeys or ducks or uh whatever it may be but all those all those times where you know it hasn't really worked out it's all kind of made up for whenever you have everything, when it just kind of, kind of all comes together the way, the way it's supposed to, like it is on real tree or if it, it is in like a film stream magazine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, from there, I guess to, to continue the story on, it was just a, a passion to, to hunt <clears throat> as much as we, we possibly could. And then, 
Um, my to to transition it kind of into me hunting now and have you know um, being a, a part of a hunting brand. My my older brother Mike was a hockey player. He got traded down to Nashville, and um, I used to hunt you know on his place in Ottawa. He had a little bit of acreage there and just kind of wherever we could. And he got traded down to Nashville, ended up buying um, a hunt camp in Kentucky. And so we um, now have a hunt camp in Kentucky. And that's where, you know, we do like quality deer management now and passing on bucks that aren't, aren't mature and, you know, all the trail camera scouting and getting the guys together. And it's a big ordeal for opening weekend with the bows when they're in velvet. And that experience is what um, really started the catch and deers brand was um really stemmed out of introducing some people that weren't hunters in the past into hunting at the hunt camp and that's where the did you catch anything our friend austin came in the the front uh the front door and asked us if we caught anything and so that became an inside joke first and then we made foam trucker hats um you know to make fun of him the next year he we got him a bow and and he came out and started to hunt for the first time we got catching deer's hats like no trademark on them no anything we got six of them just to have as a joke and then you know we said well this could be a real thing has anybody ever um taken that did you catch anything joke anywhere and uh and so that was just kind of naturally out of the hunt camp is where the catching deer's brand um brand started and so that was in um we started in November of 2016. I guess it was it was conceived in our minds in September opening opening weekend 2016 at the hunt camp is where is where catching deers really started. And we thought, well, this would be a, a great opportunity to um, be involved in the hunting industry um, to make funny videos and to um, really promote the lighter side of hunting and how hunting brings people together and relationships. And that's that's what we've been trying to do with with catching deers ever since so. did austin that did he you know did he ever think that this was going to become what it is today like whenever you guys first made those first few hats <laughs> like was he like you know what, what, what's the end goal with this <laughs> well yeah I, I don't even i don't even remember uh <laughs> but i mean I, I do like parts of it are crystal clear i mean we were driving actually in the truck mike and austin and i on the way up to hunt camp to meet all the guys and, and hunt there when we were like, this could be, you know, a real thing. We could make a brand out of this and we could do apparel. And, you know, um, Mike was still playing hockey at that point. And, and Austin is uh, the CEO of a, of a company and owns a company that does um, like private label apparel. And so it was super easy for him to start making hats and t-shirts and stuff. And we're like, well, let's roll with it and see what happens. And we're on our phones like, oh, I just got the Facebook page and I just got the Instagram page. and all of that. And so we put together kind of a rough outline, reached out to uh, a couple of friends of mine that, that um, had some very substantial experience in the outdoor space and in media and really bright marketing media minds and Reed and Ryan. And um, they are, they're partners of ours in this. And we got together and made our first ever video that was just kind of introducing the brand. And that was a test really to see, you know, is this something that has legs? Do people have the same um you know hunt camp experiences as we do you know do, do people take it lightly like we do in terms of our our kind of approach to hunting we're, we're super passionate deer hunters but also it's like um you know we we have fun with it right um we we're about the hunt camp experience about the time together we play pranks on each other all of that stuff that to us seemed to be a universal hunt camp experience and we wanted to build a brand that would represent that. And so started out with a video and that first ever video we made was really was the launching pad for what Catching Deers is now. And that went like super viral um, right away, at least in the hunting space, what so felt like super viral. Um, you know, we we're like, oh, do you think we can get 100,000 views? I don't know, it'd be crazy if we did, we'd probably sell some hats. And then we had that by, I don't know, like early afternoon and we had a million <laughs> views in our first you know 24 hours or something and i think we sold out of all of our hats which wasn't really that many um but we sold out in 24 or 36 hours or something and we were like okay let's let's try to make this a real thing you know and that's when kind of the, the hard work started but 
Yeah, yeah. I know the first video I saw of you guys, uh, and maybe the one you're talking about was when you guys were walking around Times Square, and uh, you were kind of asking people, you know, what what do you think of when you hear catching deer? And uh, <laughs> it, some of the responses you guys got was just absolutely hilarious. And and then that that's kind of what introduced me to the catching deer's brand. And it was it was it was hilarious. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, no, that was I think that was our second or third okay. video, maybe. Yeah, that was that was shortly after. Um, that was shortly after. But man, that was quite the trip down <laughs> down to New York. We're only there for maybe 24 hours or something like that and we ran into some characters and some some, some stuff that we couldn't really <laughs> oh, i'm sure yeah <laughs> we, didn't care. we had this one guy that was eager to be interviewed and you know we we're asking him about catching you know has he ever caught a deer and stuff like that and he said and he looked at us like wide-eyed and he said you know that deers they never die of old age in the wild we're like oh why is that and he just looks straight at the camera and goes, bears. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so we're, so we finished up this interview and we're like, wow, that was, that was a little rough, you know, and, and about, and we felt so bad, but probably an hour later that this guy was like passed out on a pizza box on the side of this, uh, you know, leaning up against the door. <laughs> and we were like, man, we cannot use that. Like that is, you know. Jeepers. So, um, anyway, he's a bit of a rough character, but I guess we didn't know that he was in as bad of shape as he was. So we had to filter through some of the interviews that we did to have ones that actually, I guess, represented sane people that, that, um, yeah. So anyway. I think some of the best ones you had was whenever people said they did catch deer. It's like, oh my, so what'd, you yeah. do, what'd you do with it once you got it? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think people have this like psychological, I, I don't know what it is, but um, you know, they want to be on camera. So they're like attracted over to the camera and then they can't, they can't, once you get talking to them and you get rolling, they can't admit that they don't know what they're talking about or they don't share yeah. the same experience that you shared. So they just kind of roll with it. And we caught some people in these like live, these stories of, oh, my grandpa took me and I caught one and I wrangled it down and oh yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was fun. We'll put it that way. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That was like I said, that was the first kind of exposure that I had with catching deers. I think that was probably I don't know a few years ago now. Yeah. And, um, you know, just the the whole idea of you guys just having fun with it. And, you know, you know, having fun with hunting, but also taking hunting seriously. Like all you guys are are uh, that are involved with it. You guys take it seriously, and you guys are all you know avid hunters, and you guys continue to make hilarious content continue to make meaningful content and that's just the, that's something that i've definitely appreciated with the brand so i mean also you know with the brand you know brotherhood and camaraderie that that is also a huge aspect with catching deers yeah yeah um well thank you thank you for the kind words that means a lot coming from you but um <clears throat> we our, we wanted to be authentic to what our experience was and our experience is we're serious about it with our scent control and it's managing deer and we want to, we want to have better and better experiences and creation. But also it's just as much about the conduit that hunting is in our relationships. And so why we look forward to that opening weekend and what that looks like when we're together. And it looks like shenanigans and it looks like pranks and it's a lot of laughs. And, but then we also take time and, you know, to, to grow together as men and we do Bible studies together and we dig deeper into our relationships. Cause that's what we, that's what we need as, as men is to have meaningful relationships in our lives that we feel like the ups and the downs we're in it together and we have a support system and the hunt camp is, you know, uh, whether it's three days, it's five days or it's a week, it's an opportunity for us to, kind of recharge the batteries, remind ourselves that we're in this crazy life together and we've got a support system and, you know, you got brothers that have got your back, you know, brothers, not just in a, you know, biological sense, but literally a group of brothers that, that you can do life together with. And that's so, so important that you don't go it alone. And, and so that's what a hunt camp means to us. And we want our brand to represent that as well in little things and then big things. Yeah. We've got memes that are funny. We've got videos that are funny and then we've got more serious hunts and then we share Bible verses and we're just trying to encapsulate kind of everything that 
hunting is to us. And that's not to say that it has to be that for you or for anybody else, but we're just finding the more we do this, the more people are kind of saying, yeah, no, that's, that, that's what the hunting experience is for me too. And I want to be a part of what Catch and Deers is doing and wear that logo on a t-shirt or, or a jacket or a hat. And so it, we've been, we've been really blessed in that regard. You know, I think, you know, having that blend where you, you have all these different things kind of coming together, I think it's, you've been able to reach a, a group of people that probably weren't really, you know, being reached prior to that. Like there's, you know, having the, the meaningful time in camp, like there's, there's so many different things. There's so many things that I, I guess affecting men specifically where they don't necessarily want to open up about their faith. They don't necessarily want to open up about relationships, but if you get them in a hunt camp, with their buddies, you know, you're cracking up, you're, you're uh, doing all these things, then that, you know, it kind of opens you up to discussing, you know, your relationship with God and discuss, you can open up and, you know, have a Bible study and you can talk about your family and talk, have meaningful, you know, conversations about your relationship with your wife, all these types of things. And, you know, just having that, that time in hunt camps is such a huge aspect. And I think, you know, having that brand that you guys have, you know, in the, the camaraderie and the, the brotherhood and everything. It's, it's something that, like I said, it's, you've been able to reach, you know, a group of men specifically. I mean, of course it's, uh, for women also, but you know, you've been able to reach a, a group of men specifically that have, uh, you know, they kind of prioritize those things, but they never really knew how to express it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, when I, when I think, you know, of, of our, um, of our original, it, it's been a, it's been a journey for us that, that process, right? And I think it probably is with everybody, but in, in speaking of our brand, it's, it's been a journey because we didn't, we didn't intend for this company to happen the way that it did, right? Like, like it wasn't, and I kind of, maybe it's a point of pride, maybe it isn't, but it wasn't like, um, okay, I want to start a hunting company. Now, what's it going to be, right? <laughs> it was just kind of, it just happened organically. We made a product that we loved and people would stop us and ask us about our hats before we ever had a company. And we're like, where did you get that? I want one of those. Because my, you know, mother-in-law asked me if I caught anything. And and, and so then it <laughs> kind of organically happened. And that's when we had to decide, okay, what do we want this company to be and to represent? And the, kind of the natural answer was, well, exactly what, the hunting means to us and what that whole experience is. And so, you know, it just kind of started to, you know, evolve more and more. And, and I think the faith component of it um, was added in as a layer not long after we started the company, because, you know, I, I remember we were kind of looking at it and going, wow, well, we've got, you know, some followers and a little bit of, of influence here. And, you know, where did this whole brand come from we couldn't look at each other and say well it was clearly our genius and our marketing plan that made this happen it was like no god gave us this so let's honor god with with that and you know and, and it happens to also be our faith happens to also be a, a you know a very important component of what the hunting experience is like for us so anyway it, it's hard to explain all of all of that and how it came together but um you know, it, it kind of started out with um, with just sharing a Bible verse on on Sunday mornings, and and it was either Reed or Ryan that said, "Hey, what do you think about you know doing this on Sunday morning?" And you know, we all just were instantly like, "Yeah, let's do it. That's awesome." So, yeah, I have to admit that I've kind of stolen that idea a little bit because I, I, I noticed that you guys were doing that. You know, every Sunday morning, you know, you mm -hmm. had a an awesome picture with uh, some a Bible verse kind of laid over top. So. I kind of started doing that as well. So I have to admit that I, I stole that from you. So <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was, an, it was, well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that, you know, and there's, there's, the, there's a few people that have, have um, started doing it more frequently now and that's pretty cool. Um, but I, I think um, I remember having, I remember the thought process of adding that in because we hadn't done it like the first time that thought process and you kind of have this little, I don't know if it's like this interaction with temptation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or this interaction with the devil when you decide to make a stand for, for Christ. Right. And, and, um, I remember thinking, should we do this? Should we post a Bible verse? And then the, the thought, wherever it came from, whether it was me or whether it was a, you know, a temptation or whatever it is, 
you might alienate your audience and maybe people won't like it anymore. And maybe like, isn't this supposed to be a business? Maybe people won't want to buy your hats or your t-shirts anymore. If, and then I remember the, the, the next thought was, well, I'd rather share a Bible verse on Sunday morning with an audience of a hundred than just try to sell products and not make any difference at all to an audience of a million. And then it was like, well, that's settled. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. And, you know, in the way that just kind of seeing how things have grown over the past couple of years, you know, like I said, once I started following catching deers, it's definitely, I think, you know, you can kind of speak on this a little bit more too, but it's kind of had the opposite effect of that. Like, you know, yeah. taking a stand in, in your faith and yeah, I think you've attracted a lot of people because of that, because I think it's something that the world is kind of starving for. Like there's all kinds of uh, evil out there. There's all kinds of things that there's all kinds of garbage on TV. There's all kinds of stuff that's, you know, all over the place. And I think people are looking for something wholesome and meaningful. And whenever, uh, you know, brands and companies or whoever it may be, you know, whenever they use their platform, for God, whenever they're using it to, to spread the message of Jesus, I think a lot of people, you know, will gravitate towards that. And, you know, you know, kind of speaking on that, that temptation a little bit, but I think there's going to be some people who may be turned off by, it, and there's going to be some people who are going to go the other way. It's like, well, I like their stuff, but they're talking, they're talking about God now. So I guess I'm moving on, but I think in, in a lot of ways though, I think you have, you know, grown substantially over the past couple of years since, since those, uh, those first few, uh, I guess, stances have, have kind of come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that certainly has been the case. I remember, um, a few comments and, and this is over three years of doing this and, you know, a post every week. So 150 Bible verse posts or something along those lines. Um, I remember a few negative comments being like, I thought this was a hunting page unfollow or something. Um, but then the, the, the positivity has been, you know, a thousand times what the negativity has been. And there's, I, I can literally in 150 posts, I can remember maybe two or three people that made a comment that was negative and the positivity has, has been mind blowing. And so that's, that's been really, that's been really cool. Um, and then, you know, some things that have come out of that have just been, been awesome. Like people commenting, you know, I'm going through something crazy right now. I could really use prayer. And then other people in our community and followers chiming in and, and supporting people um, in their struggles and telling them that they'll pray for them and encouraging them. When, you know, we see so much arguing and negativity on social media platforms to see that, you know, on, on our page where people are coming in and loving and supporting has been really, really cool. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been something that God has, has really blessed. And, you know, I could talk for the next three hours of different individual circumstances where it's been incredibly evident that God has just shown up and done something there. And it's like, you know, I, I can't explain it other than, other than that, you know? And so, um, there's been a lot of really cool, um, things that have happened. And so, um, yeah, it's been a really just exciting journey to be a part of and I don't know where it's going next. We've got our own plans and our own vision and things that we want to do. And, and, but we'll just see where God takes us. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, you know, that whole community building around a brand and, you know, having, having that, those interactions with people that are, I guess, associated with the brand or at least fans of the brand and, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, seeing that evolve and seeing that kind of taking place within your own platform is just, it's incredible. And that's awesome. That's something I definitely have benefited from it as well. I mean, ever since kind of following what you guys have been doing, it's been cool. really cool to have that, uh, that not only hunting community, but having that community of hunters that also, you know, have a relationship with God and they prioritize their relationship with God. And it's, a, it's been something like I said, for me personally, has been so, something that has been, you know, absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Glad to hear that. But yeah, so as far as the business side goes, I mean, you guys recently struck a deal with uh, Tractor Supply pretty big. And that's something I noticed, I don't know, maybe you can speak on this more, but maybe about a year ago or so, when you guys kind of started to get into the, the Tractor Supply 
stores. And, you know, it's funny, I can drive down five minutes down the road here from where I live, go to walk in the tractor supply and see catching deer stuff sitting on the shelf and over here in Moorhead, Kentucky, where I'm living. So it's, it's pretty incredible that you've had that, that such a huge reach, you know, with that opportunity. Yeah. Well, that, that's one of those God things. No, certainly. But um, yeah, they've been, they've been a, a, a great partner for us that we started with them in, in August and it took a long time and a lot of planning, a lot of work to bring that into fruition. But yeah, it's one of those things that um, it's pretty crazy to, to look back and say, okay, we had six foam trucker hats. Um, they were, they were, that were printed in, you know, fall of 2016 um, just for the guys at hunt camp. And then now we're on, you know, 1800 shelves, um, in the United States. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty cool thing. And, um, and for awareness for the brand, um, it's been a, it's been a, an important partner for us. So that's been, that's been a lot of fun. And, um, in the, in the journey of our, of our business, it's brought lots of challenges and it's brought, um, lots of opportunity and, and, um, uh, it's certainly been a growing experience for us. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a awesome like demographic that you kind of are going after with the tractor supply stores. Cause you're reaching guys that, you know, they, they prioritize living off the land. And I'm, I've noticed that a lot of hunters, you know, not all of them. I mean, there's all kinds of hunters all across the world that have different uh, perspectives, but a lot of the hunters, they, they prioritize, you know, living off God's creation, living off the land. And of course, you know, being in tractor supply where you're going to have a lot of agriculture, you're going to have a lot of hunters going in to get, you know, supplies for food plots or whatever it is and having that brand in there. It's been, it's been really cool and, uh, to kind of see that in there. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's like I said, they've been a, a great partner for us. And, and, um, you know, that certainly that kind of, I don't know what you'd call it the middle America, um, agricultural, um, type of consumer is certainly in our, in our wheelhouse. So, yeah, absolutely. And also on the business side of things, you guys have, you know, had some success with a, a recent marketing strategy, you know, that you've kind of been working with, with the, the whole story of Rhett Daniels. So where has the idea of Rhett Daniels come from? And, you know, how did he become the best archer to ever shoot a bow? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I got to go back to, uh, two of our business partners, Reed and Ryan, who uh, are local to me here in Canada. So the way that it works, we have an office in, in Nashville where, um, Austin and Mike are down there. We've got a team that, that does project management and some design stuff and things like that. And then here in Canada, we do a lot of our media and sales and marketing and customer service stuff. And so we have an office here in Canada as well. And Reed and Ryan are, um, our, our partners and catching deers that are up here and they um myself and reed and ryan do basically all of the the media um together and so we conceptualize we whiteboard it we we plan it out we write it together and then we film and and um edit it and stuff like that and so reed and ryan came to me and i guess they've had a conversation about it together and said i think we should do um an alter ego of sorts that will broaden and allow us to do a different type of content than we're doing already. And with Catch and Deers, it had been Catch and Deers takes New York City. It had been the most famous hunting story ever told. And it had been the, you know, the vegan hunter and these kind of these productions that that take a lot of planning and and um and are kind of difficult to execute, but but were performing well for us. And they kind of position that if we did an alter ego, it's almost like, well, you've got a brand ambassador but you don't have to go and pay for one. You just create one <laughs> and you, and you have an alter ego and it allows us to uh, work with our partners a little bit better, like our partners in Realtree and Hoyt and Browning and, and Rage and all, all of our, um, we call them our, our media partners, but there are brands that we work with together um, to, uh, to help us execute our media strategy. And so it just allowed us to do something different and something new and something fun. And so, um, you know, Ryan had, a wig and I found at a secondhand store, like a fanny pack and all this and put everything on and Rut Daniels just kind of emerged out of the, <laughs> out, of, out of the darkness. But, um, yeah, so we kind of came up with, with him together and, and, um, and decided this was going to be something that we could do more frequent, less planned out content that can promote our brand and can be a lot of fun. And, Really, like, continue along with what we're trying to do, which is, you know, 
have it relatable, have it shareable, bring, bring these funny moments to people that they can share with their friends and laugh about and be like, oh my gosh, that's so you, you always say that. Um, those are kind of the moments that we're looking for with, with Rut. And so that's kind of what we're, what we're trying to create. And then, yeah, he, he's, um, he's kind of taken on a life of his own, so to speak. <laughs> so. so have you ever had any kind of experience with a, uh, quote unquote, real life Rut Daniels? Cause I know down here in Kentucky, when you have some, uh, you have some characters down here that, you know, they, they resemble a lot of who Rut Daniels is. So <laughs> have you ever had any kind of run-ins with a, a real life guy who's kind of rolling like that <laughs> well rut is the embodiment of all of those hunters rut is the embodiment <laughs> for catching deers of that crazy uncle that you're like oh man everything he says like he's kind of not wrong but that's also the weirdest thing i've ever heard you know what i mean it's like you're crazy but i don't think you're actually wrong and like so that's kind of where rut came from is all those people that we had met like my crazy uncles and like the guys at everybody's hunt camp that is just kind of off the wall but funny and somehow just always kills like, like always no matter with if he's if he's smoking in the tree stand or hunting in jeans <laughs> they always kill and so the, rut's kind of the embodiment of of that um for the brand and that's where it came from and and it's funny to see um, all of the comments still with, with Rut that are like, this is totally you. And it's like he's, in one sense, he's totally off the wall and totally crazy. But in the other sense, he's kind of got a little bit of every hunter in him too at the same time. And so, um, yeah, so it's it's been <laughs> it's been a, a lot of fun and, and it's taken on a life of its own and, um, and it's, uh, it's been a, a good time. I'm, I'm glad he's been received well. I don't think his ego can handle not being received too well. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I know this is a, I know Rhett Daniels is a guy that you have a, you know, a close relationship with. So what's it like, you know, like playing him at, at like live shows and trade shows where you can't really, you know, cut the cameras and, you know, go back to, to not being rut. So what's that kind of like for you? Is it uh, difficult? I can imagine yeah. it would be. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes it's it's kind of funny. I'll, I'll be just kind of me like selling, right? At, at a trade show, cashing people out, you know, having, you know, um, hunting conversations. People are showing me trail camera pictures and the guys, the guys are there. And so everybody's having these engaging conversations with people and someone will just walk up and look at me and be like, when's rut coming out? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, pardon me. <laughs> so, well, now we have a scheduled time that Rhett comes out. And uh, it's funny because these kids will come up and they'll, you know, want a picture or whatever with, with Rhett. And their parents are like, is, I don't, what's happening? <laughs> you know, they don't know how to take it. In fact, I had one guy, I did a, I did like a 30 minute, it, it was, a, it was a Rhett Daniels stand up gig, but it was kind of, disguised as a um uh learning to hunt or tips from the master with Rut Daniels or, or whatever right where it was like telling hunting stories and giving tips but it was all like jokes right and um I was telling like wacky funny hunting stories that have punchlines to them and stuff and this one guy came up to me at the end and it was you know you can if you want to at the end you could this was a treat you come up and take a picture or get an autograph or whatever whatever you'd like and this guy came up just as straight faced as could be and said you know and i'm talking in the rut daniels accent and everything it comes up and he goes i've got these big bucks on camera okay but you know you said you've been hunting for 30 years i've been hunting for 30 years too this one property, I've got these big bucks on camera, but it only is at night and I never get daytime pictures. Now in this situation, what would you do? Should I plant more food? Box? What should I do? And I like, I looked at them like, oh my goodness, this is actually happening. I took the glasses off. I stopped talking in the accent and I said, sir, I think you're probably just not on these deer. Like that means they're probably betting on your neighbor's property. They might come over to food, they're coming in late. You're going to have to get some serious betting and have something on your property that's going to keep them there all the time, or you're never going to be able to kill them because you can't kill them at night. And he's like, yeah, that's what I feared. And he turned around and he walked away. I was like, how did he not understand after 30 minutes? <laughs> like This was literally stand-up comedy. 
and it, and it was just the most surreal. I was like, how did that even happen? Anyways, I, I thought that was one of the funniest moments, like the, like the funniest moments ever where this guy came up and legitimately asked Rhett for real advice and did not understand that this was a joke. So. Oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. But he is, you know, he is, like you said, relatable in a lot of ways. And I think a lot of people see him as like that, that older uncle who, you know, he always gets it done. So he just wanted some advice, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. One thing that we want Rut to be too, is like, not this like super aspirational guy. He is in a sense that, you know, he's a legend with a bow, I guess, but, um, you know, Rut is super relatable in how he approaches hunting, I think, which is like, I love hunting, but I hate waiting. And, you know, talk about how he's going to shoot a big buck, but then he just gets a niche trigger finger and shoots the first one that comes along. And it's like, that's, that's kind of what, that's kind of what hunting is. Right. I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't think we as a team want Rut to be the guy that always shoots 220 inch deer. And you're like, oh, well, that's not me. You know, it's like, you know, that's not who we are as a brand either. Now we love big deer. We love shooting big deer, but that's just not realistic for everybody all the time. So yeah, Rutz is pumped up shooting a 120 as, a, as he is a 180. So <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's something I can uh, definitely relate to because, you know, September rolls around here in Kentucky and I'm like, oh man, this is my year. I'm going to get it done. This is, is what's going to happen. And then, you know, come the beginning of November, I'm like, all right, I just need something. <laughs> Come on, show up. Just show up. I need something. <laughs> the um what was the one we had one we had one line and it was like I'm gonna butcher this now. Uh put myself on the spot, but it was like um an optimistic uh an optimistic trail camera, but a realistic trigger finger or something like that. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm in that I'm in that boat too. <laughs> well that's awesome and i appreciate you sharing all that kind of stuff with me and as we're kind of closing down here i do have a couple more questions here for you this has been a real real fun conversation and I, I appreciate you getting into all those details with me but my my closing question for you is and well first of all let me kind of set this up a little bit this is something i always ask all my hunting guests and you know anybody that i have on the show just kind of just to wrap things up a little bit and we've gone into this a little bit already and you, you've talked about it quite a bit already but just to kind of condense everything you know my question for you is what does hunting mean to you oh that's a that's a tough one um i think i have a it's hard it's it's not a it's not a tough one kind of in my mind but it's hard to articulate so i'll, I'll try with a couple different points i guess um the hunting experience to me is an opportunity to pursue something um, along with my brothers and my friends. And so it's a conduit, I guess, to the relationships that I have. I just came back from bear camp and I shot a, <clears throat> a nice a nice bear just um, a week ago, a week and a half ago. And my favorite part of that was being there with my dad and with my brother and with my brother-in-law and my brother-in-law shot his first bear with a bow. He'd never shot one before. And that moment where we walked up on it and high fived and hugged and like, it's, it's, that's to me is as much about the bond that we just created that will last for a long time, more than it is the bear on the ground or the, or the, the sausage that's going to be in the freezer or anything like that. So one is it's, or it's, hunting to me is is an opportunity to pursue and strengthen and add depth to the relationships that um that i have with my family and my friends through shared experiences that we can't do anywhere else um, i'll never forget the trip to colorado last year with my brothers and with my dad and just spending five days hiking the mountains with my dad i'll, I'll you know i i'll never forget that uh another thing is um it's a conduit. It's a, it's an opportunity to reflect on my relationship with God, doing that in the tree stand, whether it's, you know, reading the Bible app on my phone or just sitting still and just reflecting and listening. Um, it's an opportunity to step into creation and that reflects the creator in deeper and more meaningful ways every time I, I do it. And so it's my relationship with, with God, my relationship with my brothers. And then 
it's an opportunity for myself to just be quiet and just to sit and to escape the craziness of the world and have something that really just truly makes sense at a very root, almost like innate level for me, which is just going out and just, you know, maybe it's because it's a part of our heritage. Maybe it's because it's a part of our history because it just feels natural. It feels like I am a predator. I'm going to hunt and I'm going to drag it home and I'm going to eat it. It just feels like I'm being me. And so it's kind of all of those things brought together. Um, it's experiencing beauty and beauty has an important part, you know, in our, in our life. And whether it's the birds, it's the deer, it's the sunset, all of those things reflect the beauty of God and, um, and help us to understand our creator. And when we understand our creator, we understand our place in creation better. And so it's just, it, it clarifies and, and it, and it magnifies various parts of our collective experience that makes our life more rich. And that's to me kind of the best that I can put it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's great, man. And that's a, that's a great response to what is probably a, a really hard question, you know, especially on the spot trying to come up with it because, you know, for a lot of people in a lot of ways, you know, that's, it's exactly what it is. Like it's, it's a connection with those around us and it's a connection with the creator that created everybody around us. I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to. And that's really why the inspiration behind this podcast and also the inspiration behind what you're doing with everything with uh, catching deer. So I appreciate that response, man. That was awesome. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Thanks so much for, for having me on. I love, I love what you're doing and the opportunity to just dive in with people and have some real conversation. So thank you for this. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, man, that's, it's definitely my pleasure. And I, I, I appreciate that. So where can everybody, where can they connect with you? Where can they connect with catching deers? If they don't already know about it, where can they connect with, uh, you know, Rut Daniels, everything that you got going on as far as that goes? Well, catchingdeers.com is our, is our, our website. And, and from there, you can kind of find some other things as well. Um, that's where our apparel is and some of our videos reside. But we're at Catching Deers on um, Instagram and, and Facebook.com slash Catching Deers. And then at Rut Daniels is um, on Instagram and, and Facebook as well for following along with Rut. All right. Awesome. I'll make sure that I put all that kind of stuff into the show notes. That way, anybody that's interested, they can just kind of scroll down there click on those links and they'll take them right to it but man again thank you so much i know you're a busy guy so i don't want to hold you up for too long it looks like we were able to kind of keep it right around an hour or so but man i appreciate you being on the rice Kill podcast with me my pleasure thanks so much brother